Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. Today he joins us back up at Moormonkton Pools on the Match Lake today. And as you can see the weather's not particularly great but we're going to have a crack at a bit of shallow fishing for carp today using hard pellets. Basically keeping things dead simple we're going to cover everything to do with hard pellets today. So although we're going to cover shallow fishing mainly, um, the idea being to try and drag those fish as high up in the water column as possible. We're also going to set up a deck rig as well and a couple of other little things just to make sure we can keep bites coming especially when the British summer has decided to do this and throws a bit of low temperatures and plenty of rain over the course of the day. So with that said, I'll quickly run you through sort of the principles of what we're going to do today. As I've said, it's fishing hard pellets shallow. So the crux of it is going to be loose feeding pellets using a catapult. And whenever you're doing this on a venue such as this, where there's plenty of cap, you want to be doing it at a decent distance if you can. Sort of 13 meters ish is what you want to be aiming for somewhere, especially today when we're somewhere near some reeds as well. That's where fish will back off to. There's plenty of feature and cover to hold them. So it's a good place to start. A nice, comfortable range to use a catapult as well. So as I say, in terms of the bait that we've got today, all I've brought with me are some six mil standard fishery pellets. As I say, about as simple as you're going to get. You'll get those at pretty much every fishery you go to. A lot of commercials these days will produce their own, either coppins or screttings pellets. Um, and you just have to use whatever they've, they've given you. Um, and as I say, that's what's going to be the base for our feed today. Might also use those on the hook, but for me personally, I like to have a selection of hook baits. So I've got a few different colours there um, of 6mm pellet, a few green swim stim, 6 mils, a few of the krill from Sonya baits and a few of the uh, the bloodworm as well in 6 mils from Sonya baits as well. Again, just little change baits and I always like to have those on my side tray when it comes to shallow fishing. I think occasionally if the fish have been particularly finicky on a certain day, you can put on say a red pellet and a little standout bait and occasionally it can get you the odd extra bites. So it's always worth having those um, on your side tray. As you can see there, got all the things prepared. I've got a bit of paste as well, but we won't really cover that in this video. Um, pellet bander, a couple of catapults, and that's basically all you need really. The most important thing is trying to work out what depth the fish are going to be at. So as I say, if it was baking hot today, I'd probably start by loose feeding immediately and go straight onto shallow rigs. But what I'm actually going to do today is use a deck rig to start off with. So I'll run through the rigs that I'm going to use. Let's say in terms of kicking off the peg today, what I'm going to look to do is feed a small pot full of six mils and then loose feed over the top. So basically create a little bed of feed to get the fish in there and then start to loose feed and try and work out what, what sort of depth they're happy to sit and feed at. So as I say, I'm going to try and cover the water column as best I can. In terms of the depth today, we've probably got the best part of three and a half foot, something like that. Um, and the rigs, I've set them all fairly on the heavy side. They've got the aerators on today, so the fish are going to pull back. And with it being fairly warm as well, it's important that you do have decent durable gear. So the first rig that I've got set up is just a point to um, Mavis Series 2 Jamie Hughes float. Quite an old pattern, but a really nice strong pattern. And this, as I say, is just for fishing on the deck. Carbon stem, nice long bristle, nice thick bristle as well. This is crucial when you're fishing a deck rig beneath the shallow line purely because you're going to get a lot of fish at all levels swimming into the line, giving you false indications. And with too thin a bristle, it's just going to bomb under at the slightest bite. So you want a nice thick buoyant bristle um, that's going to give you a true reading of what's going on in the peg. And as I say, effectively stop you striking at what are going to be line bites. The, floor, the, uh, the main line itself is 017. Uh, Preston power line up to a double 80 elastic again nice and durable nice and strong and a small number 11 back shot there just to pimple the float down again what I'll just touch on quickly is just how low I've got that float shot I've got it shot down to about two mil of the bristle and as I said that's because I want to be able to tell when the fish are in the peg and coming up off the bottom what that will happen what will do what it'll do basically is if there's fish disturbing the shot moving the line the float will be able to bob up and down and move around and tell me that there's fish brushing into the line so as I say something that I like to do when I'm shallow fishing as I say it gives you good re good indications where the fish are moving down that rig it's a simple spread bulk four number 10s and then a number 11 above a four inch hook length of 015 power line to a size 16 QM1 with a little bait band dead simple nice short hook lengths that I like to use when I'm fishing in shallow water fishing hard pellets I think a, a short hook length just means you hit more bites you can be nice and responsive especially when there's a few f1s in the lake like there are today um, it's important that you do consider having a short hook length if it was purely big carp i'd probably fish a six inch hook length but as i say the fish here a bit smaller so a shorter hook length as you can see you've got all the, the kits today on a puller kit as well just to make sure i can bully the fish away from snag should i need to so that's the deck rig covered and i say that's what i'll probably start on the next thing to cover is shallow rigs now, what you'll see 90% of people set up is just a rig pretty much exactly like this, and this will be the only shallow rig they set up. I've got a couple of others, just as I say, because the conditions have changed a bit today, so I want to be able to chase the fish around, but this is basically your bog standard shallow rig. In the top end, I've got 
um, Drennan Yellow Bungee, which is a 10 to 12. Always use hollow elastics for this style of fishing. Just make sure that when you do hook the fish, they can just nicely exit the peg. They're not going to bolt off and splash around. So as I say, creating as little disturbance to the peg when you do hook a fish. In terms of the main line, they're slightly lighter. That's 015. And that comes down to a MAP S3 in a, in a 4x10 size. Nice small float, fiberglass stem, really strong. And again, nice thick bristle, nice and buoyant. It's not going to fly under at the slightest indication. Then that just comes down to a bulk of number 10 stots and an 8 inch hook length of 015 power line again. And that's down to a size 18 Guru MWG with a tiny little bait band on there. I'll quickly touch on the bait band choice. You can, you've got to use as small a bait band as you possibly can when you're shallow fishing that grips the pellet really tight. You're going to be fishing, slapping the rig a lot. You'll see people use say a lasso method, but for me, a small bait band is preferable. Just a bit quicker to get on the pellet. And as I say, something that I prefer, but always go for a tighter bait band when you're fishing um, pellet shell because you're going to be slapping the rig. In terms of the eight inch hook length, I prefer that again when I'm fishing for proper carp. If there's lots of F1s in the peg, I'll use a six inch hook length or even a four inch when I'm fishing shallow. But when there's plenty of decent carp in the peg, they tend to sit a bit lower down. And I think an eight inch hook length just allows the bait a bit more time to fall naturally. And as I say, can trick those bigger fish, you know, sort of more often than not. So really quite simple, to be honest. Got that float dotted fairly well down again, same principle. I want to be able to see when fish are above the float, uh, above the bulk, sorry, because that'll bring the float up when they disturb the shot. So that's the, the shallow rig, and as I say, that's the one that you'll see most people set up. Dead simple, and I've got that set about 16 inches deep. But I've set up a couple of other rigs, just to make sure I'm covering the depth. As I say, the depth's about sort of three and a half foot, so I've got a rig here set up. It's exactly the same as the previous one in terms of its construction, at about sort of half to three quarters depth. So as you can see there, that's probably fishing two and a half feet deep. The only difference in this, apart from the length of the rig, is the fact that I've just got those shot four number tens again spread out down the line, sort of in the same way that you'd have a maggot, maggot rig set up. And this, again, is when the fish are being a bit more wary, you can just lay the rig in rather than slapping and making a lot of disturbance. And this can often pick up a lot of fish on a day like this when the conditions are sort of changeable, the fish might move down beneath your original shallow rig. And a rig like this can pick off those fish. As I say, exactly the same construction, same elastic, everything. Conversely though, as you can see the sun's just come out conveniently i always set up this rig as well when i'm fishing shallow and this is sort of like a mugging rig almost if you like what i've got here is a garbolino p float that's in the six millimeter size slightly stronger elastic it's up to double eight in this case um, but the main line again is 015 and hook length 015 eight inches down to an 18 mwg again but I've got a longer length of line here, and this quite often when you're fishing pellets on a venue where it's really shallow like this, they can come sort of super shallow if you like, and you'll see the odd fish cruising around. And a rig like this is perfect for just swinging onto the odd fish. As you can see, that's why I've got a longer line between pole float and tip. And you can just nick the odd one equally. If they're coming really shallow, but they're wary of when you're slapping the rig over, you can just flick this rig in front of them. And again, really useful rig to set up. So as I say, that should cover all our rigs today and all the depths that we're going to fish. So hopefully we'll be able to get a few fish on the bank for you and show you basically how they work in practice. So what I'll do now, I'll turn around on my box and we'll feed the peg. As I say, I'm going to kick off with just a pot full of six mil pellets, probably 50 or 60 pellets, and then continually loose feed over the top and hopefully start to get a few line bites and then start to work those shallow rigs. So we'll crack on with that now. And as I say, hopefully put a few fish on the bank. Right, so as you can see now, I'm on my box and I'm ready to kick off the session. Basically, this is pretty much how I would start a match if I was starting on a shallow line or this kind of method on a lake such as this. As I said, I'm going to take a decent handful of six mil pellets. There's quite a few fish in here, so I want to get a decent bed of bait down to start off, but I don't want to put too much down, so it's going to sort of split the fish between the bottom and uh, higher up in the water. So I'm just going to put in a decent pot full of pellets to start off with. Again, one thing I will mention while I'm shipping this out is that I've already put all the pellets on the bands for the rest of the rigs. Again, just saving time, so when I want to pick up a rig, it's already baited up. Again, useful little things just to do. You can take, sort of save a lot of time by doing those things at the start, say before a match, just making sure you've got pellets on each at rigs. And then you're ready as soon as you want to pick up a rig. Say you see a fish um, that's really shallow, you can instantly pick up a mugging rig and it's already got a bait on the, on the, uh, the band. So just carefully shipping out to the marker. I've plumbed up and found a nice area where it's nice and flat, just at the base of the far shelf. Again, if I'm loose feeding pellets, I don't want to be sort of fishing um, up the far shelf as much as I can. I prefer to sort of find a nice flat area on the bottom. And again, say if I was fishing paste there as well, that's quite a useful place to find. And obviously being the bottom of a far shelf, it's a natural holding area for the fish as it is. 
So I've just popped those in there. And as I say, I'm going to start immediately on the deck rig. And hopefully, as I say, what it'll do is it'll give us an opportunity to, to lose feed quite consistently to start with. But it'll also tell us when there's fish in the peg and when they're shallow. As I say, what I'll hopefully be able to do is explain to you what's going on um, and sort of describe how the float's behaving as it's in the peg. So as always with pellet rigs, especially crucial when you're fishing hard pellets, is I've plumbed up at absolute dead depth. But because there's a little bit of a wind on it today, I've also added probably about five mil to the depth just to give the float a little bit of a chance to move. But again, it's important that you're not fishing too far over depth, especially when you're hair rigging pellets because you do run the risk of foul hooking fish. So I'm getting out to just shy of 13 metres, line up with a far bank marker. And as always, one thing that I will point out, especially when we're fishing towards like an island today as we are, you'll see that the water's quite dappled over there because of the reed beds and things. There's already a couple of bubbles coming up there as it is. So what I've been very careful to do is find an area of, of the uh, that peg at the distance I want to fish where the water's nice and dark over a decent area. So again, just allow me to see the float and then read what's going on with the float a lot better. Again, crucial when you're shallow fishing. So immediately what I'll do now is pick up the catapult and start feeding. And you'll see I've got a really nice short line between pull float and tip. And what I will do a lot when I'm fishing pellet shallow like this is lift and drop the, the deck rig just to try and entice the odd bite. Again, and the crucial thing when it comes to fishing pellet shallow is you're always looking for signs of whereabouts in the water column those fish are, whether they're happy to come shallow, whether they're going to be sort of mid-depth, and that's where sort of if you like a deep shallow rig comes into it. And obviously it's, it'll be blatant when you see fish swirling and lots of tail patterns on the surface. So that's when you need to pick up something like that mugging rig and just drop it in front of fish that you can see. So what I'm going to do is feed four or five pellets almost continually. There's a bite and a fish on. It's just come off that one. A nice little sharp bite. That's a sign of fish already. I was going to say, I'm just feeding sort of four or five pellets each time. As consistently as I can really, leaving a small gap between sort of five or six seconds, but I'm trying to sort of build the peg as quickly as I can, especially in, um, in a match scenario. When you've got other anglers around you, you need to be feeding as regularly as you can to try and draw fish in, especially if other people around you are doing exactly the same. See there, there's a fish off the bottom, the float's just lifted up. Get nothing on. So that's telling me there's one or two fish that are now sat sort of mid-depth, and that's, that's what's disturbed the shot there. Again, I wouldn't expect to catch hundreds of fish on this deck rig. Some days it'll be the only rig you catch on when you're pinging hard pellets. But on a day like today, it gives you a starting point and allows you to read what's going, in, going on in your peg. Loads of little plucks on the float there. So there's definitely one or two fish in the peg. You see it moving around, dipping and diving. And that's where fish are brushing into the line, disturbing the rig again. You can see that's, that's why I've got the rig shotted so far down. Not the best feed there. So I say when the float's doing that, it's telling me that there's fish in the peg and they, they're looking for the bait, they're searching around. One thing that hopefully I'll show you in the next sort of five minutes is more and more fish start to get drawn into the peg because of the loose feed. Is when you actually see the fish, well, you see the, the float move as you feed. So basically when the bait hits the water, you'll see the float move and that's telling you that the fish are actually taking the pellets that, that have just landed. Again, with a bit of practice, you can learn to read what's going on in your peg very well using a deck rig like this. So I can tell there's already a couple of fish in the peg. So I say we might have foul hooked that first one. There's plenty of little dips and bits of movement on the float, and that's a fish on now. So at the moment, because of the sort of like the indications that I've been getting there. I'd guess that there's fish at sort of all depths at the moment. There's fish in the peg that have, like I say, feeding on the bottom like this one. 
but there's also one or two that have come off bottom as you as i say you've seen the float sort of moving side to side and lifting up a couple of times so there's fish in the pegs so now it's just a case of keeping that loose feeding or going in i should say and hopefully it'll start to get them to compete really shallow this feels like a decent fish to start off with again occasionally some days you'll catch the bigger fish on the deck That's a lovely fish to start with. Really good stamp for this lake as well, that one. Say, cracking fish to start off with. It's easily sort of five or six pound, that one. Say, there's not that many of these in here, so these can very often be the early fish that move in and have a quick look, and as I say, having a deck rig there gives you the chance to catch them just as soon as they move in. As you can see, they're really lively because the aerator has been on all day. So I'll just try and slip the hook out of him and we'll try and hold him up for camera if he'll behave. Lovely dark fish and as I say, probably one of the old stock, that one. That's a cracking start. Again, one thing I will do once I've unhooked the fish and it's safely in the net, let them calm down for a second and just ping a few pellets in. As I say, the whole thing about shallow fishing is keeping that bait going into the peg. I'll just see if I can hold him up for camera, see if he'll behave. That's a belting carp, as I say, easily, easily five, maybe six pounds that one, and a cracking start to the session. So we'll get him popped back and hopefully we'll have a few more like him. Again, as I say with this method, as soon as you've popped a, the fish back in the net, the first thing you need to be doing is getting some feed back into the peg. Again, as I've, as I've always said, already said, I'll reiterate again, if there's anglers around you and you stop feeding, they're going to steal your fish basically. If you, they keep feeding and you're not, the fish will move out of your peg and into theirs invariably. So it's absolutely crucial that you keep the bait in, keep sorry, keep the bait going in. Again, I think what we'll do is we'll have another chuck on the deck rig just to see if we can get another couple of fish and try and make sure that the fish are really coming up and competing shallow. There's no point nicking one or two fish shallow if they're not ready, if you can catch a few on the deck fairly consistently and keep plodding away in the early parts of say a match or a session, you'll do a lot better to just leave your shallow line and keep building it. Like any sort of shallow fishing, whether it's on a mill pond for, for hide and chub, or whether it's on a commercial for carp and F1s with pellets, the longer you leave a shallow line and keep feeding it, the better it'll be and the stronger it'll be later on, so you'll be able to catch more ultimately. So again, we'll try another one of these six mil bloodworm pellets. Again, I'm not always sure, but it can be one of those things that if you do use a sort of a change bait like this, sometimes it can draw that quicker bite and especially sort of a bright red pellet in and amongst those fairly bland brown, as I say, fishery pellets. I'll try and get this one on the, on the band. It does just act as a bit of a standout bait and whether it gets a bite quicker or not, I'm not sure, but it gives me confidence that the fish will be able to see it sooner than the other pellets. So I say we'll get back out there and see if we can have another one. I'll just quickly run you through because what I'll be doing pretty much every time I'm shipping in and out, whether it's with, whether it's with a fish or to change a hook bait, is as soon as I put the top kit on the, the first set of sections, I'll get into the habit of feeding a few pellets, ship out, get the other sections on. Again, this way it's useful to have a couple of rollers behind you so you can just leave it like that. Feed another four or five pellets. I've just seen a fish swirl there again just feed a couple more and then ship out again you'll see me doing this all the while when i'm fishing shallow but one thing it does do not only is it allowing you to feed nice and accurately nice and accurately and nice and consistently but it also stops the fish from being spooked from a pole over the head so again just giving them a bit more confidence to feed and come up for those pellets so again exactly the same process just lowering that rig in nice and steady one thing that you mustn't do, and it's absolutely crucial this when you're using a deck rig over the top of the, uh, the top of a shallow line, is you mustn't lay the rig in, whatever you do, because what that risks is foul hooking fish. Bit of an indication there already. 
So it's absolutely essential. And again, this goes back to using a four inch hook length and bulking the shot down. It means that I'm just bombing that bait straight past them. There's no risk of the fish getting entangled in the rig and foul hooking. You saw a few bubbles come up. So again, that's a few fish on the deck. That was an indication there. There's a few fish on the deck having a feed. Again, because the bottom's quite silted there, I'll be able to tell that through the fact that the, the fish are obviously churning the bottom up and causing a few bubbles and that. And again, I've mentioned already the idea of paste fishing. And in most cases, I would actually have a paste rig. Or, well, I do in fact have a paste rig set up today. I won't actually use it for this because we're looking at fishing hard pellets today. But quite often, if it turns out the weather conditions do deteriorate, that's another fish on now. If the weather conditions do deteriorate quite a lot, and the fish do go down in the water column and you're not able to fish shallow, especially if it gets windy, for example, then you can quite easily just fish a paste rig over the top. And as I say, that comes into its own on silty venues. This could be a silver fish, this actually. <laughs> Might be a skimmer or a decent roach. No, it's actually a little F1 carp, this. Nice little fish, and I think these are some of the new stock in this lake. Again, hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Dead easy just to unhook him. Nice little left one, that one. So we'll get him get him unhooked. We'll get him popped back in a second. Just remove the hook from my finger. Again, lovely little fish. But yeah, what I was saying about paste fishing there is obviously we found an area of the peg that's nice and flat today and silty. And very often, as I've said, um, when it comes to paste fishing, that's when it comes into its own on these flat bottoms. Say, if I was missing lots of bites on this rig um, and it became all, almost a nightmare scenario, I was just foul hooking loads of fish, going on a paste rig instead will quite often sort out those bites and make sure you're hitting more, more bites and ultimately putting more fish in your net. So it's always worth having one set up. But as I say, that's a good start already. Two fish, really quick succession. And again, giving us plenty of time to build that shallow line. So it shows that there's a couple of fish down there having a look around. If the F1s are down there, then I would suspect that the carp have already started to come up in the water. And leave the F1s to it, because quite, quite often the, the proper carp will just bully them out of the way. So we'll get another pellet on this band and get back out there. So I say, it's a bit difficult to get the pellets on at the moment because all the gears are still damp from the downpour that we had earlier. So you can see the band, the, the pellet's just slipping straight off the, uh, out of my hand and so is the band just falling off the, uh, the tool there. Again, not ideal, but as I say, that's when, it, when it's important to have these really tight fitting bands, especially when the pellets have got a little bit damp like they have already. It just means they do grip them still. So they've had the bait brolly up for most of the day and even then the rain's got underneath it. So that's why it's a bit fiddly getting these pellets on the bands. But exactly the same again. Putting the sections together, feeding a couple of pellets, and then just repeating the process. As I say, paradoxically, almost the more time that you pulls out of the water, the better your shallow line will get. So quite often it's worth just taking your time to prepare these shallow lines. Quite often it's an option to, say, fish a method feeder before you actually go on the shallow line. As I say, today on a, on a peg like this, I prefer to actually fish on the deck underneath it and just pick up a couple of early fish. As I say, that was two fish pretty much within sort of five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it might be, for about sort of ten, well, I'll say ten pound, probably about six or seven pound. Again, just lowering that rig in. See there, as it went in a bit lower, it did start to go in a bit sideways. So I think a fish was swimming into the line there. Loads of indications. So it won't be long at this rate before we're looking to go onto the shallow rigs. Again, just going to lift and drop the float. 
bit of an indication straight away there. See plenty of fish on the bottom. It may well have just spooked one there, that's why a load of bubbles have come up. So again, just lifting the, the float out, just basically resetting it. Again, one thing that you will notice that I am doing is feeding, another indication there, feeding shy of the pole tip. Again, when it comes to shallow fishing, the last thing you want to be doing is say, especially in an instance like this where we've got far bank reeds, is pushing the fish further towards cover. Uh, floats dipping and diving all the time now, so there's loads of fish in the peg. So it's crucial that you do get a bit of practice at this method and make sure that you're getting those pellets landing just shy of the pole tip. It doesn't matter if the odd one goes past, but you want the vast majority of pellets to land short of where you're fishing. Got another small F1 on now. Tiny little bite. So again, because it's a small fish, could be a skimmer. Just going to leave the pole in the, the rest. Feed another few pellets. And then pick back up into the fish. It's actually a skimmer this time. Again, if these have moved in, then there's probably very few carp still on the bottom. But we'll give it one more chuck before we do go on the uh, that line. Again, small skimmer of probably about sort of four ounces, that one. But as I say, I'm not too worried about catching those fish at the moment because all we're doing is just giving that shallow line plenty of time to develop and allow those fish to come up in the water. Again, going to go straight back onto another one of those bloodworm pellets. And just repeat the process. Again, it's a bit hard when you're talking to camera to really keep the feed going. But that's what I'm trying to do, as you can see. I'm trying to get as much bait into the peg, as much activity into the peg as possible. So again, giving it a couple of pouches where I can. Just making sure there's plenty of activity and plenty of noise there to draw fish into the peg. So again, just lowering that rig in nice and steady. You can see loads of indications there already. Could well be small fish, and again, that's telling me that there's there's carp somewhere above that, which is sort of in line with what I was saying about loads of indications where the float's been moving up a little bit, moving side to side where fish are swimming into the line. So they could be somewhere between, say, two foot deep in this instance. There's another fish on now. Could well have been foul looked that one. See, that float's been moving sideways there quite quickly, so there's definitely a few big fish in the peg and say disturbing the rig and moving it and loads of indications where the floats lifting and dipping every single time I feed what I don't want to do is now decide that the fish have basically start coming shallow and immediately get on the shallow rigs and start chasing them around what I want to make sure is that they're nice and established at that depth and that's the fish on now, a tiny little indication. Could be a little left one this, not entirely sure. That feels like a proper carp actually. Again, not a big fish. So again, I'm just going to break down, get onto the sort of top kit in two, keep the fish out in open water. And just whenever the fish calms down for a brief second, just loose feed a few more pellets. Again, just keeping them going in. There's no rush to get this fish in. It's just important that I keep that loose feed going into the peg. So 
and just using the puller kit. Hopefully get the fish under control. As I say, today they've had the aerators on, so the fish are full of energy. So just wait till it gets right under his feet. So I was hoping he'd pop up there, but as I say, the fish at the moment are absolutely full of energy. It's like a nice little common, maybe actually a mirror cap, actually, by the looks of things. Again, not a big fish, but as I say, all we're doing is just giving ourselves time to build that shallow line and still putting a couple of fish in the net. There's a common, actually. Nice little fish, that one. So another pound and a half, two pound or so. I'll just try and nick the hook out in the net. Again, hooked right in the corner, and that's, that's the hook hold that you're looking for, for with hard pellet fishing. You want to make sure the hook's right in the corner of the mouth or in the top lip if you can, especially with F1s. But that's telling you that you've seen the bite immediately, as long as the fish hasn't taken the bait down. And like I say, it shows that you've seen the bite as soon as it's happened and you're straight on them. So again, that's what, what it comes down to with dotting the floats right down as well, even for decent carp like this. When it comes to hard pellets, you need to be nice and quick on the bite. And I say another nice little common there. I say a couple of pound in the net. Like I say, we've had a cracking start, one decent carp, a skimmer, an F1 and now this. So just by starting on the, the deck rig, giving ourselves a chance to let that shallow line develop and still putting a couple of fish in the net. So again, let's put that fish back, another five or six pellets, probably give it a couple of pouts while I'm out of the water for a second. So we'll have to put another pellet on the band. It just keeps the fish interested and keeps them up in the water as well. So quickly slip another pellet on the band, get back out there nice and quick. As I keep reiterating, the key thing is making sure there's no sort of length of time when there's no feed going into your peg. So whenever you've taken a couple of seconds to do something like put, a, put another rig on, band another hook bait, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you're getting another bit of feed in the peg. Again, just want to put the sections together, picking the catapult up again, as I say, I keep reiterating this, but it's important that basically the catapult spends as little time out of your hands as possible. Again, just using another one of those six mil bloodworm pellets. As you can see there, just behind the float, as soon as I've put that pull tip over the top, fish has swirled so that's telling me those fish are now coming up there's the odd one coming up to within a couple of inches of the surface so again it'd be very easy to pick up a shallow shallow rig and go straight after that fish that i've seen but i don't want to be doing that i want to make sure that the line's being built up for as long as possible in some case i'll sit set sort of a strict time limit and say i want to be feeding that shallow line for half an hour or an hour before i go on it regardless of what i actually see it's a similar kind of principle um, to even edge fishing, that was another nice sharp bite there, just missed that one. Quite often, as I say, you'll feed down the edge, put in a pot full of bait and see a swirl within a couple of seconds. But as we well know, when it comes to edge fishing, the last thing you want to be doing is picking up your rig and going straight over that one fish and either foul hooking it or spooking any others that might come into the peg. It's a similar kind of, similar kind of thing with this. Right, so there's another fish on now. As you can see, shipping back as quick as I can to try and get the fish away from the far bank. But one thing I will note, just quickly, is that's the longest we've had to wait for a bite so far on that line. We've had loads of indications where the float's been dancing around, lifting up, and as I say, the indications that's telling me that the fish are, are shallow, but the other thing that's been very apparent is the fizzing's almost completely stopped on that area of the peg. So there's very few fish on the bottom. Again, not a big fish. But as I say, that's given me plenty of impetus to, to go on the shallow rigs. As I say, I've seen a few fish swirl. Um, plenty of indication that the fish are coming shallow as well. 
I've even seen the backs of one or two fish as well. So as I say, that, that all coupled together is basically telling me that I need to get onto the shallow rigs now and work out what depth the fish are happiest feeding. And so be nice and careful, try and get this one in the bag because we've lost, lost a couple today already, possibly foul hooked, but as I say, with the air rates being on, they've got that much energy that a couple of them just bolted off and pulled out of them at the, uh, at the net. And it's actually a tench this time. It's a nice change. So not had one of these out of here for a long time. That's a cracking little fish to catch again. Not really what we're after today, but would be a nice little weight builder in a match. As I say, that's a lovely little fish to catch. And again, another species that we've caught. Again, one of the things fishing on the deck with hard pellets, you do catch a lot of fish on these commercials and a really wide variety because they see them day in, day out. So you will catch tench, crucians, carp, and roach and rudd as well so we'll get him slipped back but as i say it's now time to get on the shallow rigs again catching different species like that quite often the tench will be bullied out by the carp so it's telling me that the carp aren't actually feeding on the pellets on the bottom so as i say we'll get on those shallow rigs now and see if we can put a couple of fish on the bank using those mm -hmm. 